debt or equity how many percent of debt how many percent of equity in which situation i should choose debt in which situation i should choose equity in this video we're gonna learn about capital structure theory whether it's better for us to use debt or equity talking about theory looks hard difficult and complicated there will be new terms that you can learn in this video but don't worry that i try to explain those all in the simplest way i can there are five basic capital structure theories first is motligiani and merton miller or m and m proposition one and then m and m proposition two the third one is trade off theory or static theory the fourth is packing order theory and the last one is signaling theory let's talk it one by one first i will directly cover m and m proposition one and m and m proposition two for both m and m proposition there are two approach without tax and also with tax one more time so for both m and m proposition m and m proposition one and also m and m proposition two there are two approach with tax and also without tax let's talk first about without tax in this proposition without tax there are several assumptions that you should know this is only for your information first is that there are no brokerage costs there are no tax there are no bankruptcy costs investor can borrow at the same rate as corporation all investors have the same information as management about the firm's future investment opportunity and the last one EBIT is not affected by the use of cap those are the several assumptions now let's talk about the theory m and m proposition one and two without tax without tax m and m proposition one states capital structure irrelevance theory that means firm value is not affected by its capital structure one more time the firm value is not affected by its capital structure what is firm value firm value is investor perception regarding the success of the company hmm i'm still confused actually what is meant by m and m proposition one without tax okay this theory actually want to say like this how many debt you have how many equity you have doesn't affect your company value so if you have 40 percent debt and 60 percent equity and also you have 60 percent equity also 40 percent debt it will give the same value because the proportion of debt and equity in your company doesn't affect your firm value that is m and m proposition one without tax now go to m and m proposition two without tax this proposition state that a firm cost of equity is positive linear function to the firm capital structure one more time the firm cost of equity is a positive linear function of the firm capital structure let's see this graph this is the down to earth statement about this proposition if your debt is high of course your cost of equity will be higher linearly now why when the debt is high the cost of equity will also high because like this when your debt is high it means your company is riskier right it means shareholder invest in riskier company right because they invest in riskier company they demand higher return so high debt will cause cost of equity increase but in this proposition states that the wacc remains constant clear right about m and m proposition one and two without tax now let's talk about m and m proposition one and two with tax m and m proposition one with tax states that value of levered firm is equals to value of the unlevered firm 
plus the present value of interest tax yield. <laughs> As usual, I'm confused. Okay, levered firm is the firm that you step. Unlevered firm is the firm that don't use debt. One more time, levered firm is the firm that you step. Unlevered firm is the firm that don't you step. This is the graph to make you easier. When a company use debt, the value will increase. Why? Because when a company use debt, they must pay interest. And interest, as we know, can deduct the tax. Do you still remember this? So debt cost reduction in tax because of interest. We call this as interest tax shield. So interest tax shield is the reduction of tax because of interest. Clear, right? Now go to M and M proposition two with tax. Basically. M and M proposition two with tax is the same with M and M proposition two without tax. Cost of equity increase as debt increase, but the difference is that the cost of equity doesn't rise as far as it does in no tax case, and also the WACC will decrease. Why WACC can decrease in this proposition? Because as you know, with tax, cost of debt will be cost of debt or RD times one minus tax. That's why the cost of debt after tax will be lower. Moreover, as I mentioned before, that the cost of equity doesn't increase significantly like M and M proposition two without tax. Do you get the idea, guys? So basically, M and M proposition focus on the use of the debt. Higher debt enhance higher value of the firm. It is stated in M and M proposition one with tax, while the W A C C is lower. The next theory is trade off theory. To make it easier, just see this diagram. You can see here in the diagram the x-axis from zero to D one as the debt increase, the value of the firm increase because of interest tax shield that we have discussed in M and M proposition. From D one to D two, the debt still increase, but the debt starts sloping because as the debt increase, there is potential bankruptcy because of higher risk. That's why bankruptcy cost becomes important and offset the interest tax shield or the tax benefit. Because of that, the increase of the value of the firm is not significant. D two is optimal capital structure when the value of the firm is in the maximum point in the highest price of the stock. And after D two, higher the debt is, the value of the firm will. Decrease continuously because of bankruptcy costs. By having large debt, the company could face financial distress. Financial distress is the condition when the company could not generate sufficient income to pay its financial obligation or debt. Okay, I understand about the graph, but then what can we conclude from this state of theory? The company can use debt until it's optimal point because it can increase value of the firm due to interest tax shield. But after the optimal point, the value of the firm will decrease because of higher bankruptcy costs. So here, there is trade off between advantage of using debt, interest tax shield, and its disadvantage potential bankruptcy. The fourth theory is packing order theory. Packing order theory states that the preference of source to fund investment opportunity in order is like this: retain earning first as the internal financing, right, and then external financing, debt and equity financing. So, if there is new project in a the company, they tend to finance it with retain earning first. If they still need money, then they will use debt. If they still need money, then they will use 
equity as the last option. The question is why internal financing first than external financing? The answer is that because cost of internal financing is lower than cost of external financing due to asymmetric information. Oh my god, what is again asymmetric information? So asymmetric information is information failure. It occurs when one party possess more information than the other party, which causes an imbalance in transaction power. So like this, if you are confused, see my example. So in the company, of course, company manager is the one who know the company's performance, the company risk, and also the company prospect clearly, right? Well, creditor or debt holder and investor or shareholder, they do not know precisely or completely about the company's performance, company prospect, and also company risk. Therefore, creditor and investor demand higher costs because they don't know precisely actually the prospect of the company. That makes external financing has cost higher than the internal financing. Moreover, as what we have discussed that cost of debt is usually lower than cost of equity. So by considering the cost, the company prefers to use retained earning first, then debt, then equity. That is what mentioned by packing order theory. The last theory that we're gonna discuss is signaling theory. This theory states that how the company funds its project sign the prospect of the company. One more time, how the company fund its project sign the prospect of the company. So, company that has bright prospect, they will prefer to use debt because they know they will get high profit so it's better for them to pay fixed interest compared to share percentage of profit to the shareholder. Why? Because if they use equity, the more profit they have, it means the higher money that they need to share to the shareholder, right? While if they use debt, they only have to pay fixed interest. Yet if the company has poor prospect, they will prefer to use equity. Why? Because they don't have to pay fixed interest. When the company is in bad condition, the fixed interest looks expensive. Moreover, using equity, if they get lost, they don't need to pay the dividend too. Wow, well, you have learned about capital structure theory. Yes, I know maybe it is new for you or it is complicated for you, but by understanding this theory as entrepreneur or the manager, you can determine the best source of fun for your company.